Have you turned the Wi-Fi off on your mobile phone? This is no ordinary gathering. Leave your phone connected to Wi-Fi or Bluetooth and it's likely someone will hack it. They'll steal your details and post them here, on the wall of sheep, for all to see. Everyone here, at least, should know better. DEFCON has uh, what is the world's most hostile network. And it's recognised that anything within the DEFCON network is kind of fair game. I mean, there's expected etiquette. You're not supposed to screw up people's stuff. But people will be trying stuff out. Of course, visitors don't just hack each other. Some of the best talks in cybersecurity go on here, with presenters going public about how to bring down anything from a toaster to an aircraft. These guys specialise in cars. This year they've tested 25 models and ranked them on how easy they are to hack. In the past, they've taken over the brakes and steering controls by plugging in their laptop. So here is the no brake attack. So I can't stop right now. I'm moving along here. So obviously that's a very dangerous attack. So far, there's not a lot of risk, so it's, it's pretty hard to hack a car. But we're looking five years out and seeing that in five years, more cars are going to be on the internet, more cars are going to be connected, and so we want to get car manufacturers to start fixing things now instead of waiting until there is a problem. And this year, they showed just how dumb our so-called smart cities could be. Imagine the traffic in Las Vegas grinding to a halt. This is no longer the fantasy of films like Italian Job and Die Hard 4. This guy can do it for real, with his laptop and some off-the-shelf kit costing less than a hundred bucks. Meet Caesar. He's discovered that a specific wireless traffic monitoring system sends all its data unencrypted. Sensors embedded in the road detect cars and send that information to receivers. The data is used to switch the traffic lights to avoid congestion. Without encryption or authentication of that data, it's possible to send fake information that could lead to a traffic jam or accident, and even to upload new software to do the job remotely. He's released all the information publicly at DEF CON and insists publishing the hack is the right thing to do. It's not my fault because I'm just pointing out the problem. I'm not creating it. Because if I keep quiet, the problem will remain there. I mean, sooner or later, someone else will know it. I mean, it could be someone with bad intentions. Pretty scary stuff. Mike, what do you make of that? It is pretty scary, isn't it? Uh, as Caesar has shown us, we've got devices out there uh, in our roads that are vulnerable to very, very basic attacks. Um, so there's no authentication on the devices and there's no encryption, uh, which everyone at home uses encryption on their wireless now, so it's inexcusable. Um, I think the scariest thing is this equipment is being bought by governments and they aren't asking or checking the security of these devices. So it just makes me think what else is out there. But DEF CON is also about having fun. There are rooms where you can test your lock picking or wireless hacking skills. You can hack your hat or your hair. Often it's people who are the weakest link to data security, so over to the social engineering room where two actors were making fake calls to real companies trying to elicit compromising info. It's illegal to film this conversation in the US, but both attempts we witnessed hit gold. Our last call, we found out that this company still uses Windows XP still is on Internet Explorer 8 or 6, we even found one. Hacking is a family business here, so children are allowed in and encouraged to, well, steal each other's passwords. You could break in onto their account. Jeff Moss created both DEF CON and Black Hat and defends the idea of blowing the cover on ill-secured technology that we all rely on. Organized crime, they don't tell us what they're doing. We have to find out ourselves to try to protect ourselves. So it turns out conferences like this, whether they're in the UK or in France or America, they're one of the few ways that we have to get the information out about what's really going on that's not being filtered by a company or a government. This is what's really happening. Back at DEF CON and this guy who didn't want to be filmed has managed to bling up his entry badge and get it to make other badges flash on his command. And it turns out it's just as easy to manipulate the stuff in our homes too. This is one of the coolest talks I've seen to today. With the We've got a group of now, guys who are taking you know, this, uh, things this in the homes with TVs, baby um, monitors, 
fridges and basically breaking them, making them do things they're not meant to do. Um, the coolest bit is this will all be on the web after this talk, so anyone will be able to do it. It's not actually that difficult. Perhaps drink all the booze, hack all the things sums up this unique party style gathering. But for the most part, these aren't the bad guys. They love making things work even better and exposing vulnerabilities for companies who ought to know better to fix. And intercepting satellite broadcasts, yeah, that's included. Cheers.